Hi, this is Alina Kapolnik here at Cosmic Wisdom Teachings. Today's episode number one. It's a little podcast I'm going to be doing once in a while. It's just me on this podcast, and today I'd like to talk about crystal healing, also shamanism, Wicca, and a bit about Reiki. I'm a healer myself and also a light worker. I have been doing this for two years now. I've basically um, been spiritually awoken since 2006 when I was sitting on my computer and I had been doing some artwork. I was drawing a fractal with a mathematical algorithm program Um, and basically it was just some random picture I had taken with my camera and I wanted to make it into something beautiful with a fractal. So um, I went on the computer to edit it, and 30 minutes into the editing of the image, I went in some kind of a trance, basically, and at that time a wormhole opened up in front of my computer, and I went down the wormhole, I traveled through space-time, and it was a portal down into an underground chamber under Mount Shasta in the city of Taos, in what is called partially hollow earth, I believe. So I went down there, and that's my first experience with the awakening process, so that's what I'm going to talk about, my little background story of that. So as um, I traveled through the wormhole into the underground chamber under Mount Shasta Mountain, I saw a Either it was a corridor or a long tunnel, and it was glowing like a white light. Um, Not the heavenly white light, but a different light. It was some kind of a light source that they have on um, on the walls of the tunnel. So I went down the tunnel, and there were different doors that led to different chamber rooms. Um, I was guided to go down the long hallway to the largest chamber door. Um, Basically, it was a meeting door. So I entered the the chamber, and I saw this cathedral-like conference area with multiple levels of seating, like different balconies, and there was about 200 people sitting there in white robes various ET races, most of them looked humanoid, some not so much, and they were the delegates, the negotiators, the peacekeepers that had arrived for the meeting that I was um, chosen to attend. As I am what is called a star traveler, I'm a couple of billion years old, and I've come to Earth to basically help hold the light for the planet at this time. So I was invited to this meeting. It's a peacekeeping meeting that was happening. And um, I was asked, would you like to wear a white robe? As this is part of the meeting. And I said, sure, why not? I put on the robe. And I um, I was asked to join a um, delegation of 10 people who were um, looking around at computer screens on what I guess they call eyeglass pads, or for us, what is the equivalent of a tablet. There's also computer screens on the various chairs that they were sitting on, sort of like Star Trek, where you can access a computer panel through the chair um, wooden panel and a mini computer on it, so it's the same type of thing. So some of them were looking at the tablets, and some of them were looking at the chair computers. And the chairs conform to your body, and so you feel comfortable when sitting in them. So basically they asked me to join them, that group of 10 out of the 200, and they were discussing the peacekeeping agenda for the meeting. And they were looking at reptilians, images of reptilians, a group of renegade reptilians that um, basically, they created an incursion into our Milky Way galaxy. This is 2006, so that's 
that went on until 2010, that incursion. So the delegates were talking about the fact that these alpha draconians, reptilians, they had mass fusion plasma cannon weapons on their ships and that they were going to use these weapons to destroy the Galactic Federation, benevolent races, other ships that were uh, sent out near Earth to um, to try and stop these reptilian ships from, in, from creating an incursion on our planet and other planets in the solar system. So it was quite a concern how to um, disable these plasma weapons on the enemy ships, as well as they were talking about um, increasing the security um, cloaking shields around the Galactic Federation planets, and how to improve those so the enemy could not see uh, the planets and what was on the planets themselves. A lot of planets hold um, knowledge data databases, basically knowledge libraries, of universal information that's important, vast libraries, as they were called, computer libraries. And it's important to protect that information because it can't fall into the enemy hands. There's information about uh, DNA sequencing, advanced technology, and it's in those library repositories, basically. So the Galactic Federation delegates were also talking about also um, improving security on the various planet bases on space stations that are in other galaxies, not just the Milky Way galaxy. So that is the discussion that I was part of, that I was hearing. And the other um, delegates and peacekeepers were looking at the same stuff, slightly different. Everyone was assigned their own little specific area, what they were going to work on for that for, the, for those 10 to 20 minutes that we were looking over the agenda items. Um, after the 10, 20 minutes, we all heard a gong, sort of like singing bowls, but 10 times that in sound. And then the um, chamber doors opened, and the council of the 13 elders came in, 13 tall beings. Some were around 12 foot, some of them were that height, some of them were around 10 foot. And the, there, the um, Talus Council of Elders, basically, there was 13 of them, and they were wearing brown robes. Um, we couldn't see their faces, and that was for security reasons. Um, they would actually take off the, the cloak from their robe when they were speaking. So that's, and then put the cloak back on over their head from their robe. So you can see them only at that time. And um, basically, they are able to shape shift into different humanoid forms as needed. They don't always hold human shape or form. Sometimes their light energy is needed. The people from Telus are very advanced and evolved. They're anywhere from seventh dimensional and higher and um, also they have different delegates coming in and going from Telus so they have spaceports with different hyperfusion drive ships coming in and out from Shasta and all of these ships are cloaked sometimes you can see them sometimes not depending on what they're doing so basically um, the council of the 13 elders came in and they sat in this podium-like circular, circular um, round table, chamber round table, I guess, with sliding chairs in that slide in and out um, to conform to body form, like I mentioned earlier. So they were sitting in a round circle, and the other delegates in the white robes sat down as well, and I sat down in our chairs. And basically the meeting started. We were discussing mass fusion, plasma weapons, everything that I had mentioned. So that was what the meeting was about. Um, I think the meeting lasted for about two hours. 
And it was quite interesting for me because I also got to hear about the knowledge libraries, that the technology, how everything is stored, is on many crystals or on um, these data pads that are small. There are many computers, and they have viewing screens to hook up the pads to and the crystals as well, these little crystal chips. Um, informational chips that they hook up to uh, um, viewers, small computer dedicated viewers, and you can see the information stored on them. Um, it's like a graphic movie, you can real time graphic movie of events that have happened in history, sometimes even future events that have been recorded. As there are different timelines and stuff like that, so that's all recorded. There's so much advanced information that I saw during the meeting, and they were so it was a peacekeeping meeting about security stuff, but as well about advanced technology and reviewing what's in the universal libraries and how that works. So I got to find out some of that info in 2006. After the meeting, I went back through the chamber door and walked through the tunnel system. Um, and from there, the wormhole appeared and took me back to my um, my computer office room. So I I think I was missing about two hours of time, or something like two hours in their time and 30 minutes in Earth time, something like that, um, when I came back. And that was my introduction to a extraterrestrial Galactic Federation meeting that took place. Yes, um, and the beginning of my awakening process. I sort of forgot about that meeting. I thought it might have been a fantasy or something I made up, but then in 2011, um, I realized that this was real. All of it was real. Um, I began getting sick. I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Basically, my immune system started eating my thyroid and also I had many antibodies, so I became really sick. As well, I was diagnosed with hemiplegic migraines with paralysis. So basically, I'm very sensitive to lights, um, to food, to smells. I can't use paints, I can't use glue, otherwise I get sick and paralyzed. And it's, if it, it's the equivalent of a stroke, the sensations of the paralysis, so I have to be very careful in what I eat and where we sit, and if there's too much bright lights, so I get a hemiplegic migraine. So that was basically a wake-up wake call for me that I needed to change my life and that I was changing in my body, my cellular and genetic structure was changing. I wasn't completely human anymore. It's basically these um, these symptoms of the hemiplegic migraines and all these allergies and sensitivities, they're part of the um, ascension symptoms, as some people would say in spirituality movement. Uh, when you've woken up and you realize that, that there's something more in this world, basically your eyes open up to the truth and sometimes your body goes through different changes to process all the information that you've received, the various light codes and DNA upgrades that you receive, your body, your mind, your emotions, it all process, processes that and it releases what you no longer need in your life and brings in positive things. So it's a process. It started in 2011 and it's still going on for me and I'm learning a lot of different things. So basically, I um, decided to learn crystal healing to help myself go through these changes in a safer way. And crystals have saved my life a lot. When I started working with learning what crystals are, how they work, what they do, I was able to create crystal grids to help myself sleep better, to boost my energy. Carnelian is really good for boosting energies and improving blood flow in the system. Um, 
and that alleviated somewhat my Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It helps a lot with that, and it um, really helped me to re release a lot of negative energy and bring in positive energy. That's what a uh, human body crystal grids do. You basically lie in a crystal grid on the floor on a mat, and you're healed by the crystals, and you can program the crystals to help you with the healing process. You can program crystals for other things as well, for manifesting things in your life. So that's how crystals helped me, and I also created these beautiful wands and staffs, wooden wands and staffs, and put crystals on them. Um, and I started doing healing work for the earth, doing ley line work with the staff outside in my backyard, as well as going out to parks and stuff and working with my staff that way, with ley lines, covering the ley lines of the earth to give something back to the earth of positive energies and a boost. So there's less earthquakes, um, less disasters of other sorts. That's what my staff helped me do for the earth. The wands I use for healing my clients and myself as well. I have a um, healing business called Crystal Grid Creations and a website for that. Um, so I do healing work. I also work with Reiki, which is energy hands-on healing. I basically, um, what it does is it channels universal healing energy from the earth and from the cosmos. And healers just basically goes through the healer into whoever they're healing, their patient, their client, and Reiki helps to release energetic blocks, physical pain, emotional trauma. It helps you to become relaxed and stress-free. So it's really, it's just basically using light energy for healing. Yes, that comes from the universe and the cosmic web. So Reiki really helped me in a time where I was stressed out by all the conditions I had. I also had a blood condition where I was losing a lot of blood and um, yeah, I needed um, corrective surgery for that. So Reiki really helped me to boost my energy and to remove energetic blocks. And I've done Reiki on myself and other clients of mine. It's very relaxing and soothing, great stress reliever. Um, and as I worked with the Reiki and the crystal, I noticed that my memory had improved. I basically gained a photographic memory. So I can, and also an idiotic memory, so I can remember everything that goes on visually and audioly. So, yes, um, my brain is like a mini supercomputer. I remember everything that I'm told, that I see, that I experience. It's stored in my memory banks in my head. So that's wonderful. That's something Reiki and Crystal Healing helped me to develop as one of my abilities. Um, and also, as time went on, a year had passed. This was 2014, and I started learning shamanism. Because I, I knew I had some trauma in my past that I needed to resolve, and as well my, in my family lineage. So basically, I um, started learning shamanism, level one, two, and three, and I was able to do past life regression through that, as well as soul retrieval, to reintegrate parts of my soul shards back into my body. That's the uh, soul retrieval. So that helped me to heal a lot of past life trauma from my other lifetimes. And the past life regression helped me to remember who I am as the star traveler and what I used to do in the universe. Apparently, I was a guardian for the various galactic councils and federations. Of, so I was a light warrior for the longest time and also guarding the universal libraries, that knowledge, protecting it from 
negative beings that sought this information for their own purposes to basically create incursions into other galaxies and planets and take over civilizations that had not yet um, moved into the fourth or fifth dimension and weren't aware of these ET races. So basically that's the work that I did guarding these planets and these races and helping them out with negotiations, whatever they needed, defusing wars, um, working out peace treaties. That's something that I did. Um, at one time I was a weapons specialist, a peacekeeper. I took on many different roles as the star traveler. I also found out about my soulmates that are Andromedan Palladian in origin, and I have also Andromedan Palladian DNA. So that was interesting, find out, finding out about that information, what I used to do, and also about a bit about my mission on Earth, why I came here. I basically came here on Earth to hold the light for people and the Earth, to help along with the awakening process and the ascension process for people to remember who they are. Um, and so, so I came back to save one, one of my soulmates who was trapped here two million years ago by a group of greys, the Matri and the Drives. They had trapped my soulmate in, um, in a stasis chamber underneath Peru, underneath the Maramuru, which is a stargate. There's um, secret Maldet tunnels underneath um, the Maramuru stargate portal in, in a mountain. So that's... Uh, I got to astral travel to Peru and learn that information and to help my soulmate to be rescued by the Andromedans. Yes, that was pretty cool seeing that happen. That was one of my major missions on Earth and uh, to bring awareness to what's going on currently. That um, basically we are going through a huge change on the planet right now on an evolutionary level we're going through a huge change we're evolving as a species our DNA is changing from third dimensional to crystalline entity beings to the fifth dimension so we're going to be getting more DNA strands going from two stranded to three stranded to twelve stranded we're not all going to be at the same level but that's okay um, awakening in the ascension process happens for every person in their own good time. It's not a race. Everybody is different and everybody evolves at their own rate as they are ready to take in information and process stuff that they experience in their life. Um, and recently there's been a lot of information about wavebacks or the electromagnetic gamma wave radiation energy that's coming in. So that's supposed to help us with the evolutionary changes that are happening on the planet to help us evolve our DNA further and to open up our abilities for teleportation, levitation, psychic abilities, for astral travel, for mind reading, that sort of stuff. It's, a, it's supposed to amplify our abilities or awaken them. So that's part of spiritual evolution right now as well, and that's something I've become aware of, and I've actually talked to Waybacks. It's a sentient life form, in a way. It has ten different levels, so nothing can destroy or display this wave. Um, it's coming. It's already here. It's been here since March, and it's, um, it's very awesome. It has... Um, amplified my abilities a great deal. I was able to astral travel and do remote viewing before, very basic remote viewing. It was hard for me to remember what I saw, what I had viewed in real time, where I had gone. Um, and when this wave X came around, I was able to re remote view anything that I asked to see. Without going into any type of trance, I could I said, I want to go to this location, I want to see this in real time, what's going on, what, what um, fell in the cabals, 
the secret space programs were doing. I want to see this now. And I was taken and shown these things, what I wanted to see. And I was able to remember them as well. So, as well, I can now leave my body, become a light being, an a being of pure energy. I sort of have a physical form, sort of, kind of wavers in and out. But I'm basically a um, light body being that glows blue. And I can leave my body, so my human body stays here at home, and my light body goes out in space and it explores things. I can go to any planet that I wish. I can communicate with any T ET race that I want. I only communicate with the benevolent races. I do not do any type of work with negative races as I'm quite sensitive to energies. So I only work with the benevolence. And I've worked with the Andromedans. I worked with the Palladians now recently. I learned of a new planet called Altaris in the Pleiades system, where the Shen and the Vala live. They're two different races. One is quite humanoid looking, and one um, has elongated heads and green skin. So that's, um, I'm, my extrasensory abilities are quite advanced now. I can use my intuition to talk with my higher self and see what's going on. And I trust my intuition more now in what's going on. I, I talk to spirit guides. I talk to totem animals. So I communicate with quite a, quite a lot of different beings that are benevolent. Um, I met a ET race called the Guaguag. They're an amphibian um, humanoid type race who do fair trading agreements. Yes, fair trading, you heard that right. They're wonderful, they actually helped me out with a money problem that I had. I had purchased expensive sunglasses and they didn't quite fit me and they had these anti-glare blue screens on them. Um, I went outside and I realized the coating wasn't right for me. It gave me a headache. So I tried to return the glasses and exchange them for something else, but there wasn't anything to exchange them for, for. So I asked for full money back, and they refused to give me the money back. Um, I tried three times, nothing worked. I called, I went into the eyeglass center, nothing worked. And five days later, I hear this weird frog language in my head, and I started talking in it. And the Guaguag introduced themselves and they're like, we're here to help you. We're going to give you some awesome fair trading energy. And you will be able to go confidently back into that eye center and get your money back. Full refund guaranteed. Fair trading. You just tell them what, tell them what the problem was. You have our energy. We've talked to you. We've given you some tips and advice on how to get your full refund and you'll get it. Lo and behold, I went into that eye center, got my money back without a problem, and the Guag Guag taught me some fair trading stuff um, that most races don't have a money system. Not at all. It's, they, they do fair trading for goods and services, bartering. There's no money. So we're still on money system. But eventually, that'll go away on this planet as well. In 10 to 20 years, we'll have sort of like a credit system. With, but even that will go away. Even the credits will go away. So the Guaguag taught me some interesting stuff. Um, I got to learn their language. And they got to learn English because they don't have any English translation devices yet. They don't come into this part of the Milky Way galaxy near Earth. They don't often come through here because we still have the money system, so they can't trade with us. So they don't have English translators, any even computer devices. They don't have them. Um, so they learned some English from me, and I learned Wog Wog. Um, and I also learned to, through their language, some light channeling language light channeling to sing in Guagua. And I 
to mix that in with Native American language, light language channeling. It sounds very beautiful with those two languages mixed together. Surprisingly beautiful. That's healing as well. And I incorporate that with drumming. Yes, I drum on a um, buffalo drum. Very beautiful. Um, so my shamanic work, my Reiki work, my crystal healing, it helps me to get to the stage where I am able to communicate with various benevolent beings from different um, dimensional levels and realms. I can leave Earth and go to outer space whenever I want. I can remote view and do astral traveling. My intuition is very high right now. Um, and I'm aware of what's going on on the planet, what, what's going on behind the scenes with all these changes with what the Cabal of the Illuminati secret, secret space programs are doing. I'm aware of all of this. And at any time, I can go and see what's going on there. And I keep track of that sometimes. I, For beginners, I don't recommend going to see what the Cabal of the Illuminati or the secret space programs are doing until you are fully ready, your abilities are up to the par to do it. I am cloaked, so they can't see me, but I can see them. They can't do anything to me. They can't physically hurt me or emotionally. They've tried. They've tried before when I went to Mars and saw what the interplanetary corporate conglomerate is doing to people. They've kidnapped unwilling people and experimented on them, made them into cyborgs. They've ma made mass fusion plasma weapons, grenades, to um, to deploy them on um, other planets and cities to destroy them. Basically to deploy those grenades. They're, experiments, they're in an experimental stage right now, but they plan to use them on other planets and cities. The interplanetary corporate conglomerate, the ICC, they trade with 900 different races in various solar systems. So these guys are not to be messed with. They are powerful. They sent an assassin after me, a fourth dimensional reptilian human hybrid assassin who, t who tried to kill me on the etheric level, make it look like um, I died of natural causes. Didn't work. Obviously, I'm still here and I'm alive. I did suffer from paralysis for about two weeks. I had some um, neural damage on my nervous system. Because this, this assassin, she's female, her name is Akanesha. She tried to kill me on the etheric plane and torture me. And they also, one of the ICC scout ships that she was being down on, they tried to wipe my memory of what I had remote viewed. But my brain is wired differently, so they couldn't mind wipe me. Whatever I remember, it's mine. It's my memories. Nobody else is. Nobody is programming me with AI technology. They can't. Nobody is influencing me. What I'm saying here right now, it's all my experiences, all my memories. I haven't been brain wiped by anyone. And the ICC tried. They tried their best and they couldn't do anything to me. I'm still here and doing this podcast. And it's going to be posted on YouTube, so they couldn't they b couldn't assassinate me. Basically, um, no can do. I'm here. I'm alive. And the message I sent back through Akinesha is: if you do manage to kill me physically, my soul is still alive, and I can take on physical form again and go back to Mars and basically clean up the 20 ICC bases that are currently there. I can do it. I can petition um, the higher tribunals of the contacts that I have. I do have higher contacts. I can basically petition them and go and clean up Mars. So if they, kill, if they had killed my physical body, I would have come back stronger as a light being and I could have cleaned up Mars. That's always an option for me. 
Right now, I'm acting more as an observer than a light warrior, as I had been a light warrior in previous capacities as the Star Traveler. Right now, my mission is to watch, observe, and raise awareness about what's going on, and help anchor the energies on the planet to avert certain disasters that are man-made. Some disasters are not natural, they're man-made. So basically, that's what I'm doing right now. And I've gone in and I've dismantled CERN, some of CERN's stuff. That they, I disabled the Hadron Collider and I screwed up some of their computer systems. Yes, I did that. I also went in and dismantled some of the weather technology that they have. The HARP technology, that's what it's called, some of the newer HARP machines. I disabled one of them that's near Anchorage, Alaska. The ICC actually supplied these guys, the engineers, with new technology for the HARP machine that they have. It's been revamped, it's more advanced. And it has these mechanical rings that spin, infusion technology. So I dismantled those rings on the new laser beam HARP machine. And I put them out of business for a couple of months. I'm not bragging here, that's my spirit guides, totem animals that they came in in May and said, look, we have a mission for you, would you be willing to take it on? And I said, what's the mission? Could you go and disable a harp machine? They're planning on two magnitude earthquakes to set them off in California and in Alaska. So they were planning huge earthquakes for me, man-made earthquakes. So I said, sure, I'll go and disable it so those earthquakes don't happen. There was huge, huge stuff on YouTube about predicted magnitude earthquake for California. Um, that info wasn't far off. They would have detonated those earthquakes, but they didn't. I, um, I needed to go and disable that harp machine, and I did. So it's done. They could not fire it off. The energy beams did not go to California or Alaska. They were disabled. Of course, they do have harp machines on the moon. They have them on Mars. They have them here on Earth. It's not just one machine. It's multiple bases with these machines, these laser beam technologies. And they still use them occasionally to create hurricanes, to create earthquakes, and other disasters like tsunamis. They've been tinkering with weather for quite a bit, close to 100 years now. So they do have those abilities, the Cabals, the Illuminati, the secret space programs that are the negatives. They have those abilities, and on occasion they do fire those lasers up. And they've tried using CERN to um, basically block or divert the wave X phenomenon didn't work. CERN didn't fire anything off. So score one for the light. We're doing good. We're on the right track. And they also tried to use CERN to create different timelines that were negative. Couldn't. Didn't work. So that's not working for them either. And uh, at one point these guys are going to come down. Everything that they've hidden from us, it's they can't do that no more because the light is coming in more light energies are coming in every day even as I speak people are receiving the light codes the light DNA upgrades DNA is evolving in people some people are becoming more sensitive to things like light um, sound smell food I'm on a gluten-free diet I do not eat anything with GMO, gluten, or any types of additives in my food. Everything is organic and natural. I'm in trouble if I eat junk food or hamburgers or anything like that. I get paralysis with a migraine, so my body is um, cleansed.
cleansing itself is quite clean. Um, I purge anything that's not for my highest good is purged from my body. So I, I don't drink. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink coffee. I don't smoke. I don't go to loud concerts or where there's a lot of people because that confuses me. So basically I am, I am very clean. My body is clean, yeah. And all of these changes are here. And I'm not the only like light worker or healer who this is happening to. And it's happening to normal people all over the planet. We're waking up to mass consciousness and to the truth that we're moving from a third density dimension to fourth and fifth density and even higher. Some some people will be ascending higher to sixth, seventh, and eighth. And um, I just wanted to make my little introduction of who I am, what I do. I post a lot of information on my spiritual website called Messages from a Star Traveler. So you'll find a lot of wisdom teachings there about some of the topics that I've talked about tonight that I'll be talking about later on in future podcasts or interviews with people that I know that are spiritualists, ET contactees, and people who've had experiences with the awakening process and the ascension process. So I'll have more and more information on that later and more interviews coming up. Just wanted to introduce myself so people can find out who the host is of um, the show Awakening Cosmic Reality. And um, yeah, but I'm going to be doing more of these cosmic wisdom teaching posts soon. Thank you so much for joining me, and this podcast will be up soon. Thank you.